Guys, it is a cold and gloomy day in the bluegrass, but never fear because Uncle Stoney is here to bring a ray of sunshine into a dark and dreary day. <laughs> oh, you might wonder why I said that. I am thinking about becoming a poet and transitioning my YouTube channel from dog training to poetry. So if you think that's a good idea, leave me a comment down below. Uh, but no, in all reality, uh, I'm not doing anything different with my YouTube channel because I don't do anything different. So what we're going to do today is a whole bunch of the same stuff that we always do, only we're going to do it with my new puppy, Mr. No Name. And uh, now that's not his, that's not his full-time name, right guys? That's just kind of a stand-in name because I haven't figured out what I'm going to call him yet. So if you have any ideas about that, let me know. Maybe you'll come up with something I haven't thought of. But uh, we're going to go out back and we're going to do a little bit of adventure training, okay? Now, you've seen my videos before and I'm a big fan of informal learning. A big fan of putting dogs into a wide variety of environmental conditions and letting the dog learn naturally, okay? But to go into an informal session, I need to kind of knock out a little bit of formal work. I need to make sure that my lines of communication are open and I need to, to, to know that I have a you know, a pretty well-developed motivational base. So I'm going to kind of show you what, uh, what I think I need out of a puppy before I can go out and do a whole bunch of adventure training with it. Now, Mr. No Name's going to be 12 weeks in about two or three days. Uh, don't, you know, you don't necessarily have to judge your dog by my dog's standard, but this is just kind of, you know, this is kind of what I think I need before I start going out and subjecting the dog to uh, uh, a lot of environmental impediments and distractions. Mr. No Name, come here, buddy. So what do I need first? I need him to come right to me when I call him, right? If my puppy won't come to me when I call him, I pretty much don't want to be uh, taking him out and doing much with him, right? He might just run off. And uh, so I need to make sure that my whole basic vocabulary that I use with puppies is, is kind of coming along. And what do I say to dogs? I say, come when I want them to come to me. I say, let's go, like let's go for a walk when I want them to walk with me politely on a loose leash. I say, hup, that's kind of my catch-all term for negotiating obstacles. Uh, I say, easy, when I want them to be cognizant of where their body is and not knock into stuff. I say, wait, that's kind of a little temporary pause thing I say, like I would say to my children. And then I say, stay, like, hey, stay there for a long time. It's gonna be a while before I get back. So this is kind of where I think a dog needs to be before you go out and start your adventure training. Very nice. Good dog. Easy. Oh, I'm going to be real careful here for him not to knock into these planters. Good boy. Very nice. We'll still be giving him quite a few treats at this stage. That's okay. Want him to be excited. And he's going to need help on a lot of these obstacles. Like right here, we get on our balance board. He's going to need a little help. He's going to need a little guidance. That's okay. I just need him to have the basic constructs of how our interactions go. Being very calm and patient there. Easy. Come on off of there. Very nice. I need him to get excited. Oh my gosh. When I get excited, good boy, good boy. And then calm down. When I'm calm, that's what we call emotion matching. Very nice. Oh, what a good dog. I need him to have good balance and not be afraid of, you know, getting off the ground a little bit. Very nice. Good. Easy. Be very aware of his foot placement. Good boy. I need him to not be worried about sounds too much. Like, you hear that sound? You know, auditory uh, socialization is super important because when you go out in the real world, there's all kinds of, you know, sights, smells, and you just don't think about sounds very much. But, you know, dogs are very sensitive to sounds. At least some of them are, you know. Good boy different textures. Oh, look at this. See, this metal. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're too confident, dude. Oh, but see this metal here? See, it sounds funny and it's cold. Like the difference, this is something that you wouldn't think because you don't go barefoot very much, but the difference in how this metal feels to your hand and how this wood feels to your hand, it's really way different. This metal, it just really just sucked the heat right out of you. Come here, Mr. No Name. So, we need Mr. No Name to understand the textural differences and the temperature differences. You know, very nice. Wait there for a second. Good. Now, easy. Oh, that's pretty good for 11 week old baby. Hup, 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 hup. Come on, hup, hup. Very nice. Come on, hup. Oh, very good. Oh, my gosh. Hup, hup. Oh, you're a very good dog. 
Now, even though it's cold, we like to get the dogs down to the river and do a little bit of kayaking with them. We take them down there and let them get used to the water and stuff. But before we can take them and get them, you know, uh, uh, to riding in a kayak, we have to acclimate them to the kayak. So look, I'm gonna get over here and encourage the dog to get into the kayak. Good, and I might have to just kind of drop a treat in here or there. Very nice. Oh, that's a good dog, Mr. No Name. Very nice. All I'm doing is just kind of letting him walk around on here. Very nice. You are smarty. You very smart dog, Mr. No Name. And you see how this is, you know, like again, we get back to these textures. This, uh, this plastic, it's very slippery and it's also very cold. There's a lot of sharp edges. Not really, really sharp, but I mean rounded edges. There's little holes in here. These are all things that I need the dog to be completely familiar with before we're out in the middle of a, of a cold uh, river, you know, because I don't, I don't want to get any, any more wet than I have to get, you know. Very nice. Oh my gosh, very good dog. Now we're gonna go over here, get him up here on this table. And again, he might need a little help, but uh, so always be ready to give him a little help, but try each day to give him a little less help than you gave him the day before. Right, so we're just gonna kind of get him up here, you know, and get him used to being on the four-wheeler. The four-wheeler feels a certain way. It's a certain height off the ground. It's got a certain odor to it, you know. And, uh, you know, then as he gets more comfortable just sitting on the four-wheeler, uh, uh, you know, in general, uh, then we'll start to turn the four-wheeler on. And at first we won't leave it on for too long. Uh, we just turn it on, kind of let him, kind of let him figure out that it's going to be, you know, a little, it's going to be a little bit of vibration. There's going to be a little bit of noise and stuff. Oh, we just tell him it's okay, nothing to worry about. Good. Then we turn it off. And then every day, you know, we kind of keep at it and add a little bit more time. And then once the dog will set up here and he, you know, shows real nice, calm, confident demeanor, then uh, then we can take off riding with him. And that makes it easy on Uncle Stoney because I don't have to walk as much. All right, then we kind of do other little fun stuff. You know, I want to make sure that, like, I have the ability to influence the dog uh, under, you know, I took my leash off a little early, but I want to make sure that I can influence the dog under relatively high levels of distraction. So I might have my son come over here and, like, ride his scooter around. And while he's riding his scooter around, uh, I'm going to keep working with Mr. No Name for a minute just to let him know that we're liable to see some motion in the environment. It could be another animal or it could be some kids or whatever. And uh, it's, he still needs to focus on me, not worry about what's going on in the environment. Very good. So I just have George kind of follow me around, make noise and ride a scooter. Very nice. Good dog. Now when the scooter comes into play, my reinforcement schedule has to be a little bit faster. Oh, very nice. Have to talk to him a little more. Very nice. Good boy, easy. Good dog. Oh, you were smarty. You were smarty. Very nice. Okay, George, that's enough of that. Good. And then I like to, you know, like, always like to know that uh, I can hold my dog's attention a variety of ways and, and before I put them in a high distraction environment. So not only do I want the dog to perform well like when I'm working him, so like I had him on a leash a minute ago, but I want him looking for chances to interact with me and do things together where like it's completely voluntary. And I'll show you another example. Hey Georgie, bring me that stick. So a fun exercise we do around here, and I just do this to kind of help Eli and George develop their timing and their ability to influence the dogs is I teach them to teach the puppies to follow these sticks around. Now see this is completely voluntary on this puppy's side. He's not having to follow this stick around. I don't have a leash on him. I'm not making him do it. I'm just allowing him to do it. And you might think what is the point of doing this? Ah, there's no point. Not really. Kind of just something fun to do. You know, I mean, uh, <clears throat> like we can guide them into positions. Oh my gosh, you're a very nice dog. Very nice. Very nice. We can bring him over here. Good boy. We can ask him to sit. Very nice. We can ask him to lay down. Very nice. We can ask him to come. Good boy. Oh, you're so smart. You're a very smart dog. You can ask, you can ask him to spin. Oh, a couple of times. Very nice. 
Good. Oh! You can ask him to heal. Oh, can you heal for me? Very nice. So that's just a little simple test, just to see if the puppy wants to stay engaged with me before we head out back. You know, is he interested enough in me, uh, you know, when I get something out like this stick and I just go to doing something goofy, does he look at the work as, uh, you know, something fun, or does he look at the work as something he has to do? You know, if you go to take your puppy out in a high distraction environment and he's viewing the work that you're doing with him as something he has to do, well, as soon as he gets a little distance, you know, away from you, or as soon as the environmental distraction level gets too high, he's probably going to lose focus, okay? And uh, so I like to know that, like, the dog is actively seeking participation in the activities that I'm engaged in. You know, that's what lets me know that we're ready to go out in the world and get away from this formal stuff and get into the informal situations where I think the most important learning happens. All right, so we're, let's go on out back now. Oh, George just reminded me that one of the reasons we're going out back is to desensitize this puppy to gunfire and uh, to uh, take him and let him get a little bit of experience of following our mentor dog Henry around while Henry looks for dummies in the brush and stuff. Okay, so you do a little fetching and you don't have to have this before you go do your adventure training, but uh, it's, you should definitely be working on it. Like if you have a puppy that you plan on doing some retrieving with later on, by 10 or 12 weeks you need to be, you know, you need to be having like your, your, your the basic understanding of what's going on here so we have an item and we want this dog to take this item in his mouth and then hand it to us so we tease him and as soon as he puts his mouth on it we say yes that's super important right now I'm gonna do it with a clicker so you guys can hear when I'm happy with the dog you don't need this clicker I'm just gonna do it so like you guys can hear so I get the puppy he's a little bit excited oh my gosh and then when he's reliable about putting the dummy in his mouth then I'm gonna start letting him hold it in his mouth for a second good Good. And once he's pretty reliable about that, get him excited. Oh my gosh, you're a good dog. Oh, you're such a fine animal. Oh my gosh. And then I'm going to start tossing it a little ways. Oh, the fine animal. Very nice. Oh, now look, when, guys, when you're doing this inductive retrieve, don't do much. Got less is more when it comes to retrieving. The biggest mistake with the retrieving is people throw things too far and too many times. Oh, you want it? You want it, you gotta let me have it if you want it. Look at here. Very nice. Oh my gosh, you are smarty. All right, now we'll do one more time. We'll do a little bit longer this time because Mr. No Name is an overachiever. Oh my gosh, what a fancy animal. Come here, come here, you fancy animal. Very nice. Oh, now see, he kind of. He kind of mouthed on it a little bit there. I'm gonna get greedy. Oh, you should never get greedy. But I'm gonna get greedy because I want you guys to see. Oh my gosh, just how excited Mr. No Name can get. Oh, you can go get it. Oh, that's so perfect. Oh, almost. Oh, oh Uncle Stoney's gonna get a little bit more greedy. Should never get greedy. This is such bad advice, guys. Oh, that's a perfect one for me. Very nice. Never get greedy like that. <laughs> it just, it's, I literally, I try to fight myself. You know, if something goes wrong, I try to just like roll it off and be like, oh, guys, that happens. Don't worry about it. But ultimately, you know, I mean, I'm a fallible human being. And I wanted you guys to see how well Mr. No Name can actually do that. And that was pretty good for an 11 and a half week old puppy. All right, so now let's go out back. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to walk around a little bit, and I'm going to throw the dummy, and as these puppies chase uh, Henry around, kind of get used to moving around out here in this, uh, you know, this uh, little brushy, grassy area. And again, guys, I, you know, I always want to draw your attention to all the things that are going on in these grassy areas. Look, you have so many different textures, like this grass is a texture and a smell, and this leaf is a texture and a smell. But not only does it have a, you know, a tactile uh, you know, uh, aspect to it, and an olfactory aspect to it. Okay, it also has an auditory, I'm gonna put it on my microphone, an auditory aspect to it, right? And all these things are, you know, dogs have to get used to these things. You can hear this. See how that's different, you know? And like, let me pick up something that's kind of dead here. Here it's snap, it snap, it feels different. See these things, these things are sharp. And it's good for puppies to get experience with sharp things when they're young so they don't just, you know, go, go crazy and throw their bodies into dangerous situations later. All right, so now we're gonna walk around out here in my field 
and uh, George is going to be over here and whenever I signal George he's going to uh, fire a blank out of a 22 rifle and that's going to be kind of how we start to acclimate these puppies to, uh, to gunfire. Okay so I've got two puppies with me. One of them is uh, named Stoley, he's a Jack Russell and then I have my dog and then I have Henry. So look see these dogs are just kind of chasing Good Henry. Good boy Henry. Good boy. Very nice. Good. And everybody's just learning. They're just learning about environments, you know. Okay, so, like one of the things that we run into in these fields back here all the time, which <laughs> Henry has walked himself right into a, look at this. Let me get this there. Let me get my pocket knife. See, these are things that puppies have to learn about at an early age. Look at that. Just old briar bush. And, uh, you know, it's funny is like, you know, you get to a point in your outdoor career where you want to buy nice fancy stuff like this outdoor research uh, jacket, you know, and it's pretty expensive. You come out here and spend a day traipsing around in these and don't know, you know, don't, don't pay attention to what you're doing. And uh, these little nylon jackets like that rips them just to pieces. So like, look, you're going to go outside. Can't depend on this. You have to, if you want to get you a nice goose down jacket, nice duck down jacket, whatever they've got, then make sure that you get a Carhartt jacket uh, or some other appropriately dense cotton weave to go over it. That's just a little side note from your dog training. I don't want you to go out and ruin your fancy jackets. So we're going to walk around those briars as much as possible. Okay, and we're going to get over here a pretty good distance. Good. And, uh, come on, Mr. No Name. Good practice calling, Mr. No Name. Very nice. Come here, buddy. Very nice. Gonna let him see Henry go over here and do some fetching. Oh, what's Henry doing? Good. Oh, good boy, Henry. Heel. Stay. Good. All right, so Henry. I take my dummy. I'm showing Mr. No Name. Mr. No Name, what are you doing? Throw it for Henry. Good boy. And Henry just crashes through all that stuff. He'll stay. And uh, Mr. No Name follows right along. So there's Henry. Good. And there's Mr. No Name. Perfect. Working out perfectly. Oh my gosh. Just jumping around, running. <laughs> Nothing too strong. Now I'm going to put Henry over here on a sit stay. Stay. All right, and I'm just going to play with Mr. No Name. So you saw earlier, I had a little retrieving going. He's kind of getting the hang of it. So I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to start where there's uh, not any brush, where there's no grass and there's no little trees, and there's no sticker bushes. Oh my gosh. So this is just like we were doing up there at the kennel on the small challenges course. Oh, we throw the dummy. Oh my gosh, Mr. No Name, you're such a good dog. Oh my gosh, come here. Very nice dog. And he comes back and I say, hey, I appreciate that. Very good dog. Very good dog. Uh, now, I'm gonna move over here. I'm just gonna kinda throw it in this brush a little bit. Get him teased up there. Now he jumps off into the brush. Now he's heard some birds and he's looking around. Oh my gosh, but he came back to his work and I really appreciate that too. Very nice. Now I'm gonna throw it in a little bit bigger clump of grass. Bigger clump of grass. Oh, what a wonderful animal. Fine animal you are. Very nice. Oh, and we just keep working our way, you know, into harder and harder situations. So, you know, at first I just let him run around out here. Then we did a little retrieving and there was no grass. And then I kind of threw it in some grass. Now I'm going to move over here and I'm going to throw it kind of into this tree area where he's got to work to get it a little bit. Come here, Mr. No Name. Do you see it? Good boy. And I really want you to think about all the differences. Guys, where we were just a minute ago was just, there was just grass, where Eli mows during the summer. And then we moved over into some clumps of grass, like this, clumps of grass. And now, like where I'm sitting and standing, here, listen to this. You hear that? Hear it? Okay, well it hears, it, you know, it sounds dry and crackly. Well, it feels dry and crackly on the puppy's feet, you know, so this, it's way more than just fetching. You know, when we were up there on the small challenges course, had those little mats out. It's a pretty sterile environment. And uh, so, of course, it's easy for your dog to focus the more sterile the environment is, okay? We move out here, dogs really gotta, like, it's really gotta focus. And its senses are getting flooded with all this information. Now I'm gonna throw this over here underneath this old tree. Good. And those old trees like that, they have all kinds of stuff in them. There's birds that live in those trees. Oh my gosh, 
Very nice, Mr. No Name. What are you, where are you going? Good. So as Mr. No Name works, as he navigates through here, he's got to go over this dry, crinkly stuff. Look, you see here? It's muddy. It's been raining in Kentucky. I mean, it's like, like biblical level flooding in Kentucky. He's got to go through that. He goes over here, and now he starts smelling. This smells whole different. And he gets under here, it's wet. And then right up there, some birds nests. And they, you know, what are the birds doing? They're pooping. And so there's bird poop under there. And so this right here, just being right out here in my backyard, is a, it's a complete adventure for the dog. Always remember, guys, like, just because you don't think of it as an adventure doesn't mean that your puppy doesn't think of it as an adventure. Just because you don't think of it as, a, as an extremely rich and stimulating environment does not mean that your puppy does not think of it as a rich and stimulating environment. Because I guarantee you, if you spent just a little bit of time coming out and looking at stuff like this, smelling trees, I mean, look at this. What is that? You know what that is? I don't know what it is either. I wonder what it tastes like. Mmm, yuck. Doesn't taste very good, right? So, <laughs> I, I need to know that. See, I know one more thing in life now. I've probably come out here and tasted some poison, but I'll never uh, have that problem again because I know it tastes bad. <laughs> So with my puppies, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get this, this toes to nose stimulation, right? I'm trying to get them ha I'm trying to get them stimulated. I want information coming from every direction. I want it coming from their sense of taste, their sense of hearing, their sense of sight, their sense of smell. I want everything. I want them flooded with information and I want them to learn how to work in those situations where they're hyper stimulated, you know? So watch, one more time, I'll show you how we went from just doing some basic run-of-the-mill 12-week-old lab training up at my kennel to coming out here and putting it to work in a real-life environment. <laughs> Mr. No Name, go in that tree, get that. Look at that, 12 weeks old, not even 12 weeks old, be 12 weeks old next week. Oh my gosh, such a smarty. Oh, you're such a smarty. You're such a smarty. Good boy, let's do it again. Let's show them how smart you are. Now, isn't that awesome? Oh my gosh, good dog, oh my gosh. And so that's fun, you know, that's a big part of this learning process. And so earlier, you know, when I said, uh, you know, we're gonna do formal and then informal, right? Well, look guys, there's not a die hard line between formal and informal. I mean, of course I came back here and I worked on some formal concepts like come to me, go with me, uh, retrieve for me. But really all those things are just tapping into a dog's natural instinct to kind of hang out with you and do the type of activities that it's been bred to do. Most of what we're doing out here is just putting the dog in these environments and letting them like experience, you know. And so what they start to do is they start to see things happen and, and they start to form associations. Like they'll see George put the backpack on, or they'll see me put the backpack on, they'll see us start the four-wheeler. And you know, when they do, they really, really, really like get excited, you know? And around here, they understand that that excitement must be controlled because whatever it is that they're excited about, the only way to access it is through indirect action. In other words, if you wanna go out back and you wanna have a big adventure, if you wanna to get to fetch and play and, and, and tromp through the woods, then you have to Pre predicate, you have to preface that activity with calm, attentive, and polite behavior. Okay, so we're just going out and moving around, having a good time. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, and you guys have seen my infamous brush pile out here with the <laughs> all the various things that live in this brush pile. And we got a new pack of coyotes out here that's keeping us up all night. But watch, I'm just going to come out here. And I'm going to start walking on my brush pile. Now, there's no pressure on this dog to try to navigate this brush pile. He doesn't have to come up here, you know. I'm not making him. I'm not forcing him to. I'm allowing him an opportunity to engage in an activity with me. That's completely different. At this age, you don't really want to be forcing your dogs to do stuff. Not, not too much. I mean, obviously, there's some things they have to do, right? Because uh, nobody lives a life where you just get to do what you want all the time. But primarily I want to approach our activities as mutually beneficial exchanges like so the puppy gives me something which is calm attentive polite behavior and I give it something back some fetching some adventuring some climbing some running some jumping some swimming some kayaking I mean, it's a pretty good deal all in all mr. no name show him one more time show him one more time how smart you are oh and uncle Stoney is not as <laughs> Uh, Uncle Stoney is not as coordinated as he used to be, 
But oh, my puppies are doing good just like always. That's right, because we have big time, big adventures. Now, so look at this, guys. I fell down in this brush pile, and Eli's laughing at me back there. George is laughing at me. But look at me. I just turned my frown upside down and said, I'm going to embrace it and, uh, you, you know, have a little fun. So I just call Mr. No Name up here and I'll give him a big hug. And I'm so proud that he came to my rescue. Oh, maybe I'll send him over to work in the Swiss Alps or something. Be a rescue dog. Turn him into a St. Bernard. There we go. All right. Now let's go back up here. We've got one more thing that we want to work on before we head into the house. Um, and uh, I'm going to have George... Uh, I'm gonna have George uh, fire the rifle a couple of times and we're just shooting blanks, uh, dummy launcher blanks. All righty, George, give me, a little, give me a little action there. Very nice. And you see, see Mr. No Name had not a, a lick of bad experience with that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have George, uh, he's, gonna, he's gonna fire the rifle. I'm gonna get Mr. No Name's attention with this uh, little dummy. George's gonna fire the rifle and I'm gonna throw the dummy. Mr. No Name. Mr. No Name, go ahead, Georgie. Oh, I forgot Henry was out there. Look at Henry. <laughs> Henry, you're supposed to be a mentor dog. You're not supposed to be taking over. Hey, you sit, nerd. Sit. Stay. Oh, Mr. No Name, it's your turn. It's your turn, Mr. No Name. Okay, Georgie. Okay, so you see right there, right as I went to throw that dummy, I didn't time it right. Okay, and George made the noise and the dog looked over there. So I'm just gonna walk around out here and show the dog that sometimes he'll hear that noise. Oh my gosh. And he won't know exactly where the, where the thing that he's supposed to retrieve fell, right? And so we just walked out here and we found it, okay? Again, that's a, that, was a, that didn't happen on purpose, right? Don't get so excited about like your whole training session going to plan. If something happens that's not expected, just embrace it and roll. With and uh, so like right now, for instance, we have the rest of this video to make and uh, we're not gonna get to make it uh, because one of my clients who I thought would not come since it was cold and rainy has just showed up. So we're gonna have to go up here and uh, do a little regular old uh, public dog training. Go get it, Mr. No Name. So I'll get just a couple of more retrieves on my way out the gate. Oh, good boy, Mr. No Name. So I'll just kind of walk and play a little bit. Oh my gosh. Just go ahead and finish out our environmental socialization. Oh, teach that dog to go look for things. And if it can't find them, to start using its nose. Oh my gosh. Very nice. Oh, you're a good boy, Mr. No Name. You found it. Good boy. We just get a few retrieves on the way out of the field. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. What a good dog he is. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Now these are easy right here, you know, where there's not, uh, there's not any brush. And so I'm going to throw it into the brush. Now he's going to have to climb and jump and deal with those textures and smells and different kinds of sensations. Oh my gosh, Mr. No Name. Oh, you a great dog. You a great 12 week old dog almost. It's almost your 12 week birthday. Good, very nice. Now see, he lost it there, right? He thinks it's right here, it's really over there. So even at this age, he's gonna start learning to use his nose to find it. And I'm just gonna walk up here with him, kinda get him moving in the right direction. I'm not gonna do it for him, I'm just gonna help him. I'm gonna move my body in such a way is that his body gets put in a situation where he'll notice that dummy. Oh, and there he is, there he did, he did it. Oh, that's a good boy, Mr. No Name, right through that brush. Oh, you're a smarty. You're a smarty. Oh my gosh. We'll come up here and find us another little spot. You don't need a weed. Oh, you don't need a weed. Come on. See right there, he ran into a he ran into a little stob and lost his place. I'm just gonna let him work for it. Look at that. Very nice. Oh, what a good dog. What a good dog working through adversity. Oh, you're such a hard worker. You're such a hard worker. Come on, buddy. Throw it. There we go. Just let him work for it. And see what'll happen, guys. You, you don't think about it. You throw it where you can see it, but like see this brush here? Like that's inside his line of sight. So he didn't see it where it fell exactly. So he's got to come over here. Go on. He's got to come over here and use his nose to find it. So I'm not gonna do it for him. 
I'm just going to walk around and let him find it himself. This is us working together, okay? And that's what it's all about, is learning to work together. Not doing it for them, right? Not forcing them to do it, but learning to work together. And this might take a minute, but watch. Oh, he found it. Mr. No Name, that's awesome. Oh, you're your best dog. Okay, so I hope that kind of gives you an idea of what you guys should be doing oh, with your little puppies. All right, let's get back to work, Eli.